The 050 release of Flare is a very big release for us. We are now in public beta. The largest change that you will notice when you first download the program is a license key window. And if you would like to obtain a license key, please go to flare.geodesic.tech and follow the links there. Or you can go directly to account.geodesic.tech. Uh, to purchase a license. When you purchase the license, you will see the screen that I have here, and uh, let me uh, show you around. So the first thing that uh, you will notice is that the splash screen has changed. Uh, we're using the same branding that we have on the website, and we've also added this nice little beta thing here, and we have an explanation of where you can go if you find bugs, uh, or if you have suggestions for things that we could improve. Uh, we did want to make it very clear that this is still a beta. For example, we have a long ways to go, I think, still on GDTF. We have made a lot of progress, but uh, we're still working on making all of that work solidly. So let's dive in. The first thing that I want to show is we now have this nice skybox with a nice moon. We can do weather systems and such, and I'll show that in a moment. So if you have, say, maybe like a festival or something that you would like to previs, or if you would just like to have a stream that's outside, uh, you can now do so. And we don't just have night. Um, if you come down here, we have a new window. Uh, this might change in the future, this sort of double layered thing, but uh, it's what we've got for now. So let's see if I, let's just go, so we're at nighttime now. Let me go to a different time of day. So you can see now we have a nice sun. Again, this is the blank scene, so there's nothing in here. Uh, what I would expect from this kind of thing is if you have a, an MVR that you've created in Vector or exported from Vectorworks or something, you could go ahead and import that um, up here and you should get that in. Which brings me to, uh, we have made a bunch of MVR improvements. There was a bug where, uh, the the handedness was wrong. So if say you brought in a model of like a drummer, the uh, the hi hat would be on the opposite side. So we've we fixed that with MVR, uh, and we've also made some updates to the way that we handle normals from uh, Vectorworks's exports. So they should look a lot better now, and uh, you'll be able to visualize them with this nice outdoor scene. Uh, if we go down to the parameters, we have a bunch of stuff here. So we can go to uh, maybe like clouds, and you can see we can add clouds, and we can change the way that this looks. Uh, we can add wind. Uh, one of the things that I really like is if I come back here and I turn on the weather, I can turn on some rain here. You can hopefully see that. It's kind of subtle, but there's rain happening in here. And uh, if I come over here and I turn the temperature down, uh, you'll see that the rain becomes snow. So this is a very subtle thing, not very important, but I'm really happy about it. I think it's kind of a fun thing that we added. Um, and I hope that you enjoy it too. All right, so now that we've seen the skybox, we're going to go back inside. I'm going to go to a new show, and we have a new template. So if we go to the stadium here, I will click Load Show, and you can see our new template. And this is going to give me a chance to show off a couple of new fixtures and things that we have. There's kind of a lot going on in this scene. Uh, we've got two layers of moving heads. We've got our CO2 cannons here, and then we've got some pyro embedded in the floor. We've also got some new emissive objects that are kind of in the background here, and maybe I'll, and I'll show those in a moment. Um, and then we also have some moving heads up here and then obviously as you can tell we've got these large uh, branded assets that feel free to remove them if you would like um, but we use this for um, for some some fun videos that we made uh, recently uh, there are also I'll add these are also emissive so we've added a bunch of stuff um, to make this template possible and you can use all of those assets in any template that you would like uh, or in a blank template and if you want to import things uh, imp import MVRs or GDTFs etc so the first thing uh, that I'll show, one of the cool new fixtures, is if we go over to the uh, the pyro module here, so you can see like it's rather tall and it's kind of just embedded in the floor here. I liked that look better so that we didn't get uh, these kind of warts in front of what is a nice glowing thing that I'll show in a minute. If we go over to our DMX panel, I'm going to go ahead and start that, and you'll notice that uh, our flame is black, which is kind of odd, but that's because this is a special flame that we've created. We still have the old flame, but we thought it would be fun to add an RGB flame. Uh, this is something that's possible because of the refactor that we did and the way that we can now handle GDTF. So let's make our flame blue. Um, this is very unrealistic, and so if you're doing a stream and you want something that's intentionally unrealistic, you could do something like this. Or uh, if you are doing like a treatment for an artist and you're doing previs, maybe you can you know you can really tune the color here so that it looks the way that you want it to look. Um, we do have RGB on our pyro modules now. 
uh, or at least on our flame modules. And then on our pyro modules, we have the same. So pyro modules are the sparklers. And if we turn those on, again, you'll see we've got a little bit of uh, smoke coming out here and then some, some heat effects that are happening as well. It's kind of subtle, but uh, I'm going to make that blue. And you can, again, see that we've got blue. Maybe we have a purple one. Uh, I think that this can create some really fun looks, uh, especially when, you know, we bring the lights down here. So let's do that. Let me, uh, we've got a lot of groups up here. Let me go to the flare branding group and I'll just select all of these and bring the dimmer down so you can kind of see what's, uh, what this looks like a little bit better. You can see we've got a nice emissive uh, coming off of the, the flame here. It's lighting up things around it, which I think is kind of nice. Um, and then also we've got our CO2 cannons. Let me turn these back up so that it's a little bit easier to see the CO2 cannons. Uh, sometimes, depending on the angle, these are, we're still working on the interaction with the light here, but uh, you can see we've got these nice CO2 cannons. They're all the way around, so there's, there, it's a symmetric, it's rotationally symmetric. Uh, so we've got these CO2 cannons that you can launch off as well. Those are grouped under the CO2 group in this uh, world outliner. Okay, so that's the new fixtures. Um, there's a lot that I want to show off in this, but I guess I would recommend kind of just playing with it. You know, if you play with all of the floor lights, for example, um, so we have moving head. These are a little bit cut off on my screen here, so let me just extend that. If we go to moving head floor, uh, we'll just select, I'll select all of these here. Uh, and you can see I've got all of them. And so now I'll just turn up the shutter first to 255. So we've got a, a solid beam. Let me turn up the dimmer and then we can turn up the tilt. And uh, we've got a nice thing. So something else you might notice as I'm doing this is that the beam quality is, um, is fine, uh, it's, but it, it could be better and maybe it could also be worse. But um, I can sh we, we have added now the ability to change the beam quality settings. So I'm running on a laptop, which means that I'm a little bit performance constrained. I'm on the high mode now. You can also set it to low, um, and you'll see that with low, obviously the beams don't look very good, but you can get performance out if that's what you need. You know, if you have a really big set, uh, you can get very good performance with a lot of beams when they're set on low, but you have to deal with these artifacts. If you wanted to render out, then you could set it to epic quality, and now you can see that these beams look quite good. Uh, let me turn down the uh, let me turn down the branding again so that we can kind of see how that looks. Um, flare branding. All right, let's grab these and we will turn those down and go back to our moving heads on the floor. And um, yeah, you can see that these beams look look pretty nice. Um, I'm going to probably lose a couple of frames here because Epic is is quite quite a performance tax. Um, but if you are rendering out when we do the frame by frame rendering, these will render in very very high quality. It'll look very crisp. It'll look very nice. And of course, you can you know use gobos and such as well to have these nice looks. Uh, we can I don't know, let's make like a bluish green light here, um, and then. The way that these are set up makes for some nice sort of rotational effects if you would like, so you can pan these around um, and get some, some kind of nice effects. And we also have the same thing on the top. We've got a, a bunch of moving heads up here that you can play with. And then if you play with the secondary level of moving heads, you can create really cool patterns, uh, especially if you're sort of rotating them around. All right, so please enjoy the arena. It's a lot of fun, uh, especially if you use the NDI Alpha and you want to do a stream or something and you put yourself in this arena, uh, let us know about it. We'd love to see it. And the next thing I can show is actually part of the uh, original panel that I was going through, which is down here. We now have a fog. So we, we now have this fog. I'm going to turn off some of these uh, things because they're a little bit distracting. And so let's select that and we'll stop that. And I'm going to also turn off the CO2 cannon. And all right, cool. So. You can now turn up and down the fog as you please. So first I'll show you the clouds. If you use clouds down here, you can create just a subtle effect if that's what you want. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a little, you can kind of see it up in this section here if I turn this up and down. Um, if you want a much more intense effect or a much more impressive effect, you can use the fog intensity over on the right. And so as you bring this down, you'll notice that, uh, yeah, you, you lose sight of a lot of the things that are happening. So now if I turn this way up, you can see that we've got this pretty nice look with the beams. And uh, so we can, let me grab all these, and I'm going to turn the dimmer up a little bit so that they cut through that fog a little bit better. Um, and there's still a, there's a, there's, a li there's a little bit of artifacting happening. That, that's something that we're working on with these beams. But I think, you know, in general, like, they look uh, pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with them, personally. Um, and so we can go back up to the flare logo, and now that we have the fog on, if I turn these up, they'll be a lot less bright. And they'll affect the fog in a volumetric way um, and create, again, these, these pretty nice looks. So if you're looking for a smoky club kind of look, I'm not sure that a stadium would really ever look like this, but if you're looking for like a smoky club, you know, you can use this fog to create some very intense effects. 
Speaking of fog, we also now have a, a fog effect specifically as an asset. Um, also, because I didn't do this before and I've now got all these flare branding selected, these are emissives with RGB, so I'm just gonna like make them purple, I guess. So now they're all purple uh, for fun. Maybe a little more red, cool. Um, if we go over to assets and we go to effects, we have a new folder called effects. Uh, we now have two smoke clouds that you can use. So uh, I'm gonna bring in the bigger one and you'll pretty quickly be able to see what's going on here. So this will automatically spawn this dynamic smoke effect. So if you're looking for something that's foggy, but again, a little bit less intense maybe than that fog or it's broken up, you know, it, it just gives you some more options for uh, making things that look realistic. Now I will note that, or I, I, I want you to know that when you move this, uh, it doesn't it doesn't move as a block, it's sort of a generative. So if you move this up, if I like, let's, let's uh, move this way up here, you'll see that it doesn't happen immediately, these sort of move out of existence and then they'll slowly move up to here. So what you can do is you can have multiple of these um, and you can create these nice, these really nice fog effects. Uh, yeah, again, if you're doing like a club or if you're in an arena, etc. Um, I'm gonna turn these down a little bit because it's uh, affecting my frame rate. And yeah, so uh, we have this fog effect now. The, uh, I think that's it for the, the big feature updates. Uh, maybe, you know, we do have a bunch of new assets, a new, you know, a bunch of new generic things that you can play with. These are all uh, emissive here. Each of these slopes on the side next to all of the seating. Um, and so you can change these colors. You could also bring these into whatever you want. And as always, if you wanted to use like one of our emissive cylinders to create like an LED, uh, something that behaves sort of like an LED strip but performs a lot better than if you had like a matrix fixture, uh, that's something that you can do with these generic shapes. So we've added uh, we've added this slope shape for um, any any of your needs. Uh, one other thing I'll add, we've got we added this uh, we added a hexagon shape. Let's see if I can see if I can find it in these groups here. Let me minimize this group. Oh, hexagon lighting that's convenient. All right, let's uh, grab that. And if I make that red, you can see we've got this nice sort of red glowing stuff inside. And so you can use this to build your own stuff or just use it if you want to use the arena as a um, prototyping ground, for example. As I mentioned before, uh, we fixed a couple of bugs. We fixed MVR transformations. So when you bring in MVRs, uh, the handedness of your guitarist or drummer uh, or other objects will now be correct. And um, we've also fixed an issue where the fireworks would sometimes not work. Um, so that that's better now. Um, and also, finally, we've added a bunch of icons. So previously, there were a couple of there were a couple of objects that didn't have icons. Uh, I will say that this cylinder uh, got bundled and we'll be fixing that with the next release. But uh, we have all icons for, for all of our assets now, uh, except for that pesky cylinder there. Uh, with that said, again, this is a very big update. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff you can do in this arena. We've got the new, uh, we've got the new skybox and I can't wait to see what everyone does with this. Thank you very much for your time, and I really hope that you enjoy this release. Let us know what comments and questions you have. Please join our Discord or submit suggestions to our suggestions portal at suggestions.flare.geodesic.tech. Kind of a long URL, but that's where we're taking suggestions. So thank you very much for your time, and enjoy Flare. <laughs>